Give them a voice. Obey the Lord. Let me finish with this. Let me finish with this. Go with me to verse nine. He said, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets, because of the prophets, because of the leaders, not because of what the world is doing, not because of what uh, President Trump is doing, not because of what President Obama did, but because of the prophets. We look at everybody else but ourselves. It's time to look on the inside of self. It's time to do self-examination. It says, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake and I'm like a burning, I mean, a drunken man. And like a man who wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of his holy word. Jeremiah was broken because he saw God showed him the hearts of God's leaders. You say, no, it's not me. I'm not done. I'm not a prophet. Okay, wait a minute. For the land. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of a curse, the land mourns. Because of a curse full of adulterers, the land is mourning. Because there's so much adultery in the church. There's natural adultery and there's spiritual adultery. You cheating on the Lord with another God. You cheating on your natural wife with the woman in the choir, the woman in the pulpit, your assistant. And thank God don't see you. But you in the pulpit every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday night service. And think that God don't see this. God is not pleased. He says, woe unto you. Look at this. For the land, he says, full of adulterers. But look at verse 11. For those who say, I'm not a prophet, so this doesn't apply to me. He said, for both, for both prophets and priests, that's the bishop, that's the elders, that's the pastor, that's the preacher, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles. You fit in this category. It's all of them. He said, are profane. They're profane. He says, yes, in my house, we're talking about in the church, in the house of God, in the church. Where people are supposed to be saved and get delivered and get free and walking in holiness. There's profane spirit, the spirit of profanity and a profane spirit on the leaders in the house of the Lord. He says, I have found their wickedness. Says the Lord. He see it. He see what you're doing. When you're not in the pulpit. He see when you care more about. How much money the offering was. Than you care about how many souls were saved. He see it. He see when you want. You want more people in the church. Than you want to know. That people are delivered. God sees it. He sees the wickedness of the hearts of man. He said it's a remnant. It's a remnant of those who are staying with holiness. But there's a massive of adulterers. There's a massive of profaneness in the body of Christ, in the church, in the pulpits, in the ministry. You're in the media ministry. You're, you're the youth pastor and you cheating on your wife. You're the choir director and you're cheating on your husband. God see it. He said, I found your wickedness. I see the fornicators. 
your pastor that's not married and you say, well, I'm not married, so that doesn't apply to me. But you're fornicating. You're a fornicator. You're not married because you don't want to commit to one woman. But the Bible said that you're supposed to be a, a man with one wife. And we're seeing more and more single pastors than I've ever seen before. And trying to say that they're living like Paul. The devil is alive. Lose him. Is holiness or hell? Wide is the way to destruction, but narrow is the gate to righteousness. There's no other way. It's narrow because a lot of people have compromised God's word. They've compromised what God is saying. They've compromised the truth of God's word for the world. Let me share this with you. Verse 12, therefore, therefore, their way shall be to them like slippery ways. You're going to be unstable. You're going to be slipping and sliding. In the darkness, they shall be driven on and fall in them. For I will bring disaster on them. I'm going to pause right there. Is there a disaster in your life? Is there a disaster in your ministry? Self-examine. God just want to correct some things. He want you to be holy. He wants you to be a pure leader. We have to correct some things. I'll bring disaster on them. The year of their punishment, said the Lord. And I have seen the folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied by Baal. Hmm. How many times do we see this? All this false prophecy, prophesying by Baal, seeking uh, uh, psychics and witch doctors to get your prophetic knowledge, making up, making up, having people set up to know people who they are so that you can prophesy taking prophe prophecies from other leaders and saying God told you and spoken to you and through you and you got it off YouTube. Come on now. Prophesying by Baal. And cause my people Israel to err. You didn't cause them to fall. Cause them to fall into error. Because you've left the first love, your God. You've left the Holy One of Israel. You left the God that called you from amongst the unclean thing. You've left the God that called you from your mother's womb. Who purposed and destined your life. So now you're seeking the God of Baal to get revelation from. Instead of seeking the Almighty. Instead of seeking the Alpha and the Omega, you're seeking through people. You're seeking after psychics. You're seeking after um, the next preacher in line, the big pastor on TV, and repeating what they're saying instead of hearing the voice of the Lord for yourself. And you've caused people to be scattered and be destroyed. We have blamed so many things on Congress, but what about the church? What about the whoremonging in the church? What about all the incest in the church? What about the homosexuality in the church? What about the lesbianism in the church? What about the fornicator in the church? What about the, 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 the young boys being molested in the church? We're turning a blind eye to all of this. And we think God who sits high and look low is not going to judge us? That he's not going to deal with us? You want him to deal with the world, but because you saved and gave your life to Christ, now you covered under the blood that you could do whatever you want. No, 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 no. That's not biblical. The grace message has gone way too far for the believer. And when grace is preached so hard, 
the Bible said where grace is, I mean, where sin is, grace that abound that much more. But that don't mean that you continue to just sin and sin and sin and sin. He said, repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Give up the lust of your flesh. Deny your flesh. You know, we want to say that leaders are human. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to make mistakes. But we're supposed to be new creatures in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That old man that lusted and fornicated and committed adultery and smoked, uh, smoked weed and smoked cigarettes and drank alcohol and cursed and mistreated his wife and mistreated his kids. That man should be gone. That woman who have fornicated, who have been a hooker, a prostitute, who've been promiscuous, who's been a liar, a manipulator, who was a drinker or a smoker. She should be gone because when you came into the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gave you a new identity and all things are passed away. And behold, all things will become was made new. You are a new creature. You should not be doing the things of the old. So you are without excuse. The world has given the church an excuse to sin and we should not. Allow the world to dictate how we are supposed to live. We are supposed to live according to God's word. Holiness. Holiness or hell. The last time I checked. The church is compromised. Because the world said it's okay. Because we want to be without laws. Without rules without consequences, without conviction. We have gospel artists collaborating music with secular artists who know not the Lord, who have no relationship, affiliation, no connection with the Lord. And pastors, leaders are standing behind these things and saying, it's nothing wrong with it. Well, let me show you in the word of God how he sees it. Not how man sees it, but how the Lord sees it. He says, also, verse 14. Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evil doors. So that no one turns back from his wickedness. You strengthen in the hand of that evildoer. Making sure that they make money. Off of the Holy One of Israel. Who knows him not. You allowing governments to write checks to your ministry and your church. You allowing crooks and thieves. To. Write checks to your church to keep your doors open. These evil doers. That's walking in the principle of God. Because they know as a man soweth, so shall he reap. So they sowing into your ministry. These evil doers. So that they can reap the benefits. Of the promises. That God has set in place for the believer. And you think God don't see it. He knows that you are allowing and taking money. From people that are whoremongers. People that are abusive to their wives. People that mistreat their children. And, and th because of their statue. Because of who they are. The, the drug dealers that are selling drugs on the corner. And you're getting money. To open up your churches instead of trusting God and being dependent on man instead of being dependent on the Lord. These evildoers. God said it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing. He said so that no man, no one turns back from his wickedness. He said all of them. 
are like Sodom unto me. He says like Sodom unto him. The word Sodom is sodomy. Perversion. Sexual sin. Lust. You don't care how you get it as long as you get it. And you stand in the pulpits and you preach to God's people and you're causing them to be destroyed. <laughs> because you don't teach them the truth. You don't teach them how to come higher. You're not attending to them and you're not feeding them. Feed God's people. He said they're like Sodom unto him and her inhabitants like Amara. Just wicked. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them. He's talking to the prophets. He's talking to the priests. He's talking to the pastors. He's talking to the leaders, the bishops, the elders. He said, I'm going to feed you with wormwood. I'm going to feed you with a, 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 a spoon of bitterness. And then I'm going to give you water of gale. More bitterness. Nothing good is coming your way. Because you haven't hearkened to the voice of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Look at this. Verse 16. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. We've taken... Touch not my prophet. I mean, touch my my prophet. I mean, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm out of context. You think because this is bishop and prophet so and so and pastor so and so and elder so and so and apostle so and so, and they living all wrong, they wicked, they adulterers, they profane, and you know it. You know he been. M messing over his wife, cheating on his wife. You know that he got a side chick. You know she got a side a a a a sugar daddy in the back. God say, don't listen to him. That scripture don't pertain to them. Touch not my prophets. I mean, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. That doesn't pertain to them. God say, don't listen to him. Don't hear him. This is what the word of the Lord says. Not me. He says, thus says the Lord of hosts. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesied to you that you know ain't right. They make you worthless. Listening to them be making you worthless. You're becoming worthless by listening to these prophets, these line preachers and, 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 and evangelists and apostles and bishops and, 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 and uh, uh, prophets that are not living holy and not living according to God's word. They are making you worthless. Come on now, somebody. Making you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart. Not from the mouth of the Lord. Their vision not even coming from God. It's from their own heart. It's only how they feel and how they want it. It has nothing to do with the Lord. They build in big mega churches. Has anybody asked, did this come from the Lord? You're building coliseums and you're building uh, uh, this building and that building and this home and that home. And nobody has questioned, is this from the Lord? Or is it from your own heart? I heard a bishop say that they, he had to build a $1.2 million home for him and his pastor friends. Is that for you? Or is that from the heart of the Lord? Or is that from your heart? And I respect leaders. But I'm tired of false prophets. False leaders. False evangelists. False apostles. False bishops. False uh, pastors. False elders. I'm tired of seeing it. And finally, the Lord just gave me this word and he told me to record it and to share it. Because it won't be received in the pulpit. They won't let you in to tell this word. But my people need to know the truth. And this is the truth. This is God's word. I didn't make any of this up. I read it straight from his word. Straight out of the mouth of God. Whew, Jesus. 
He says, verse 17, they continually to say, those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. You so busy worrying about cash and checks, you proper line, knowing they don't even love God, have a relationship with God, don't want to have nothing to do with God. And all they want to do is have somewhere to invest their money and they become your investor. And you know they don't love God. You know they don't have a desire for God. You know they don't want a relationship with God, but you want the accolades. You want to be seen. You want to build the biggest church. You want to have the best uh, televised ministry. So you are connecting yourself with wicked and evil people that have no desire, no relationship for the Lord, don't want to know the Lord. You see what does say the Lord? This is what is a continually being done. For who has stood in the council of the Lord? When the last time you've been in the throne? Or do you even know what the council is? When have you went to the courts of heaven? He said, who? Hmm. And has perceived and heard his word. There's a remnant that is hearing the word. They're telling it. They're telling what God is speaking through these storms. They're telling people what's about to come on the earth. They're telling people to repent and turn and get your life right. They're telling people that God is speaking to the earth. The earth is in travail. The earth is in mourning. God is bringing something new on the earth. God is rearranging your life. They're telling the prophet, the true prophets, the true apostles are speaking. And the false pastors and preachers are the ones that get in their pulpits and rebuke and, re and, and come against the true apostles because they don't have a mega ministry because they don't have 5,000 members because they're the remnant. <laughs> the remnant is not the masses, people. Understand what the remnant is. It's the chosen, the few. He said many are called, but few are chosen. The remnant is the chosen, the few, the people that people don't listen to like me, the few, the people that when they look in Google and say, oh, I don't see this, that, and the other, and they don't have this big ministry, and they don't have the big lights, and they don't have 100,000 followers, so this can't be God. That's the remnant. Jesus goes to the ones that people least expect. That's the remnant. He said it'd be very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom. I always remember that. I'm all for people prospering. I'm all for God blessing. I think it is a mighty, mighty thing. But I think the prosperity message has gotten tainted. Just like the prophetic message has gotten tainted by false leaders, false prophets, false preachers, false apostles. It has been tainted and God is removing the tainted spirit out of his church. And he want people to know who he really is and how he really see things. This is the word of the Lord. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, a violent whirlwind. It will fall violently on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he is, has executed and performed the thought of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. Every prophet ain't telling the truth. God ain't sp spoke to them. But if they had stood in my counsel, that means if they was in the throne room, if they was praying and seeking the face of the Lord on their face, crying out to the Lord, spending time with the Lord and, and, uh, and in the council, in the, in the throne room, in the courts of heaven, heaven has courts. 
where he brings his prophets and his apostles and his evangelists and teachers in and he begins to feed them what he is doing. He said, I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, not your words, but the word of the Lord, then they would have turned them from their evil way. See, the church is always trying to find another new idea as to how to draw people. Well, you don't have to look for an idea. You need to look to God. You need to talk to the Lord and get in the counsel of the Lord. And hear the word of the Lord. Because he said, when you do that, you no longer need to figure it out. But my people will hear my voice. They will hear the voice of the learned and, and they will turn. We're looking for another way to attract the, the millennials and attract God's people, the young people. Why are you looking for another way? You need to look to God for the way. What is God telling you to do in your ministry for millennials? Quit asking the youth. They don't know. They are not God. They don't have enough word in them to give you ideas concerning what the ministry is doing. And if they do, you better know that it was from the Lord. But if you was in tune as a leader, if you was in tune in the heavens, if you was in the council and hearing the word of the Lord, he would speak to you and it would be nothing but confirmation when they come that say, yes, and two or three witnesses, his word shall be established. <laughs> my God, my God. My words, then you would have turned them from their evil and from the evil of their doings. If you're in the council, hearing from God, your church wouldn't be full of so many evil people. He says, am I a God near at hand? He said, ain't going nowhere. God say, I'm right here. Says the Lord. Am not I a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself? In secret places. So I shall not see him. You're not hiding anything from God. You're hiding it from man. But man does not have your expected end. Man doesn't have your destiny in their hands. They don't hold your future. God does. You can't hide it from him. He sees all things and know all things. He says I am near. I'm not far away. Do I not feel heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying I have had dreams and I have dreamed and I have dreamed. How long would this be in your heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. God's wrath is being released on the earth. We're ignoring it. We've rejected. Say, he that rejected my word, reject me. Stop rejecting the word to leaders, to the body of Christ. Let's get a house in order. Let's get our house in order. Let us Get back into holiness. Repent. Turn from your wicked way. He said, if my people that I call by my name would humble themselves, pray and seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. Don't you know that he would hear from heaven and he will heal this land, this land, America, he would heal America if the body of Christ, if the apostles, the prophets, the preachers, the teachers, the, the evangelists, the bishops, the elders, the prayer partners, the, 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 the intercessors, the prayer warriors, 
The deacons, the deaconess will get on their face, turn from evil and pray and cry unto God to heal America. And we will not see the wrath of God like we are seeing now. People are being blinded, trying to say that this is not the wrath of God. Don't be deceived. God is speaking through the winds and the waves. He is speaking to his people. He is caught. The, the earth is in travail and mourning and crying out to the the people of God to get in position. He's not crying out to the world. He's crying out to his bride. Position, Position, heal yourself. Heal yourself. In my closing, you need to read John 3, 36. Romans 1, 18. Romans 12, 19. In Ephesians 5 and 6. If you don't believe that God is releasing wrath on America, and a lot of it has to do with the body of Christ and not so much the world. Because if the body of Christ get in alignment and get back to holiness and hear the voice of the Lord, things would change. This is Shakur. I'm signing off. I hope someone received this. I hope you be blessed by it. I hope you share it with somebody that needs to know that the body of Christ needs an awakening. An awakening is coming. He's awakening up his bride. Awaken God's people. God bless you.